So what is artificial intelligence? Well, Russell and Norvig define artificial intelligence as the study of the general principles of rational agents and on components for constructing them. Agents in this context are systems that can take actions on the basis of the inputs they perceive. In other words, they look around the world, they perceive some information, and they take an action, right? And a rational agent is one that acts so as to best achieve the to achieve the best outcome, or when there's a certainty, the best expected outcome. So a lot of times an AI system is not necessarily gonna know all, what exactly is going to happen if it takes an action, right? So, um, you know, a Waymo driving car, right, thinks that it's going to be fine if it keeps moving down the road at a constant speed, but it might be that something runs out in front of it, in which case it has to take an additional action to overcome that, right? So there's a lot of uncertainty in those kind of environments. Russell and Norvig specifically steer away from human comparisons uh, but I like that idea, right? Because I think that's actually more useful from a business perspective. In other words, we're not going to define intelligence as what a human would do. Instead, we're going to define intelligence as making the best possible decision, right? Um, thus, business AI is the development of artificial agents, which given the information that they have about consumers, competitors, and the focal company, suggest and or take actions to achieve the best business outcome. Now, in many cases in business AI, they're not actually taking an action. They're suggesting the human take an action on the basis of some information provided to them. So some examples of AI in um, business applications would be things like chatbots for customer service. Nowadays, a lot of times when you first connect to a chatbot, and even when you connect to some telecom systems, you're actually not talking to a human, right? So if you click the little button that says, would you like to chat with us, right? You're usually not talking with a human for the first couple of interactions. In many of these cases, they're trying to see if A, they can solve the problem without ever giving you to a human because humans are expensive, or B, can they at least narrow down at which human is best gonna be able to fix your problem, right? At least that way you don't have to kind of go through multiple humans to get to the right one. Netflix is all the rage right now, right? Recommending content about what you might look at, uh, what you might want to watch next, right? Um, and those recommender systems are essentially business AI systems that are making recommendations about suggested actions you should take, right? You can also monitor and predict supply chains, right? So uh, if things are out of stock, if they're not available, right, then you need to know why that's happening and where it's happening. And it might be, for instance, in an in example that I was working with a client on, right, that you want to detect that something five or six steps up the supply chain is not going to be available six months from now, right? Because if that's the case, then you can start planning on ways around redistributing your supply chain, maybe knowing you're going to be out of stock of certain items so you can anticipate that with your promotional campaigns, right? And so being able to take care of all those kind of things through the use of artificial intelligence might be useful. Um, a classic example a lot of people try to play, apply AI to is portfolio performance, right? Can I choose exactly which stocks or which equities, right, that I should be investing in in order to maximize my um, overall uh, performance of my stock portfolio or my equity portfolio, right? Um, and I was involved even early on as a um, graduate student in developing a system like this. Um, and, you know, people have been trying to get better and better at this. And, of course, as they get better and better, the system, other people get better and better and the system kind of keeps up as the stock market always does, right? Um, a great kind of small niche example that I really like to share because I was involved in some of the early funding of this was the identification of potential competitors for a firm based on natural attacks. So you get these gigantic, you know, um, 10K statements that are filed by companies. They talk a lot about what they do, right? And historically, we've placed companies into competitive segments on the basis of the declared industries, right? But in reality, right, especially with companies moving and changing what they're doing so much, um, you know, they're competing, they're competing in other spaces, right? For instance, Amazon, right, competes against Walmart for sure, right? And that's kind of the traditional space. They're both retail agents, right? But Amazon also competes against Netflix and Disney Plus because they have these uh, this huge online streaming catalog, right? And that's something that's not necessarily readily apparent from just looking at what kind of firm they are. 
So instead, let's take the natural text generated by those firms and compare those to each other to try and develop a more robust understanding of who a firm's competitors are. Now, machine learning arose as a subfield of artificial intelligence. It is the study of the automatic improvement in the performance of a computational agent over time as a result of experience in the world, right? So artificial intelligence is a big topic. It's basically trying to replicate all of the ideas of a rational agent right within a computer, right? Now, machine learning is a specific aspect of that where basically we're saying, hey, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to do things like necessarily like generalization and other aspects, but instead, here's a set of data and I want you to find particular patterns on that set of data that I could use, right? So examples from this include things like classification and regression, right? Like if I give you a, um, a particular customer, are they likely to um, sign up for a subscription in the near future or not, right? Regression is the same thing as classification to some extent, except that it's on a, a scale, right? So rather than asking a yes, no question or a multi-class question, I'm going to ask a particular numerical question, like what is the value of this customer to me in the future, right? Um, you know, there's great examples of machine learning from like robotics, right? Trying to figure out how to move a robot around. Computer vision, trying to understand what a computer is seeing and processing that. Um, you can think of this as agency and cognition and all these different aspects, right? Data mining, which is sometimes also known as knowledge discovery and data mining, is a related field to machine learning, right? Um, that overlaps in many ways. The focus primarily on real world applications in the context of data, right? So you have a large scope of data and you want to um, pull out particular patterns and classify them appropriately. In some ways, machine learning, you know, data mining is a subset of machine learning because machine learning would also take um, such things as trying to help a robot navigate is as a machine learning problem, right? Whereas data mining generally that would not be part of it because you don't already have all that data in, in, in extent, right? Uh, but data mining also goes beyond machine learning because it's also concerned with the larger scope of data analytics, right? Just noting down particularly correlations necessarily or particular um, patterns in the data aren't necessarily machine learning. It kind of depends on how you phrase the problem. So, um, Traditionally in marketing and business, right, when we use the word model, we are describing a descriptive model, i.e. a model that describes the observed data. But machine learning and artificial intelligence tend to focus on predictive modeling, i.e. models that predict future data points, not the current ones we see, right? So this takes a little bit of difference. So a lot of times when a computer scientist says the word model, what they mean is that I want to build a predictive model, something that will tell me about the future. Whereas a lot of times when a, a analyst or a business researcher says that word, they mean a descriptive model or a model that describes the current data set, right? Predictive models are aimed at helping computational agents to improve their form performance. So it's a slight distinction between them and descriptive models. So what's the difference between machine learning versus statistics, right? So a lot of what we've talked about or even mentioned like logistic regression and linear regression, they are essentially statistical tools, right? And I think it's more of a matter of perspective. I think this O'Neill quote, the shooter O'Neill quote, expresses it very well. Statisticians have chosen to spend their lives investigating uncertainty, and they're never 100% confident about anything. Software engineers, on the other hand, and machine learning people, like to build things. They want to build models that predict the best they can, but there are no concerns about uncertainty. Just build it. You know, at companies like Facebook or Google, the philosophy is to build a machine learning tool and iterate often. If something breaks, then just fix it, right? But there's no discussion about how perfect the tool is or how confident they are. A data scientist who somehow manages to find a balance between the statistical and computer science approaches and to find value in both of these ways of being can thrive, right? So I would argue that really, if you want to be someone who truly understands data patterns in the world around us, um, you really need to understand both machine learning and statistics and come at them at the appropriate angles at the appropriate time.